What's up? Oh. Been a little bit longer than usual since my last video, and so well, let me tell you why. I've found something new, an, an obsession, if you will. Dudes. I bought a pair of Hey Dudes based on a colleague's recommendation, and after wearing them twice, I, I was in love. I was hooked. So much so that I went back and I bought two more pairs, so I like six dudes total. And anyway, something else pretty spectacular happened over the break. Uh, my channel passed the 200 subscriber mark, and to that I say... <clears throat> Seriously? <laughs> you must be really friggin' bored. Nah, but all jokes aside, 200 subs is nothing to sniff at, so... Thanks. But that's not why you're here. You're here to see some blender compositing, so I've got a challenge for you. Coming up, I've got a real-life shot of my house, but I've comped in a virtual asset in Blender. So see if you can spot which is the fake object in the scene. Good luck. So, were you able to spot it? Maybe it jumped out at you, maybe it didn't, but if you picked the jar of utensils at the very end, congratulations, you were right. Or if you picked the plant that was in the background, congratulations, you were also right. Or the bottom two picture frames on the wall, congratulations, you were right too. Or the wicker basket on the table, or the rug that was over there by the couch. Congratulations, all of you were right. <laughs> so how did I pull this off? Well, let's start at the beginning, you silly fuck. So I set up a motorized Neewer slider on my countertop and I mounted my Sony FX3 to it. And I know what some of you might be saying, ugh, Neewer. Hey, it's cheap and it does a good job for what I need it for, so just, you know, don't hate. I set my start and end points in the sliders app and I ran the action back and forth a couple times. I tried to do this initially with a shot that was further back where the countertop was more prominent and I added some pink gaff tape as tracker markers. This didn't work out as trying to track along a reflective surface is really hard to do. But I anticipated this, so I also filmed the shot that you see now. When I was happy with the shots, I broke down the slider setup, pulled down my Insta360 camera, and set it on the counter. I took between 8 and 10 shots with this camera at various exposures, and we'll get into why later. This next part may cause a little bit of controversy, but it's the workflow that suits me best, and if you've got a problem with that, you can suck my- I know, listen, I know, I know, I, I know, I know Blender has its own native motion tracker, but for some reason I just can't get the Blender motion tracker to work for me as well as DaVinci Fusion's does, so I just use the 3D camera tracker in DaVinci Fusion and I export it for Blender like so, just, ah, just, mm. watch, just watch. I imported the shot into DaVinci Resolve and I whittled it down to the section that I liked best. I opened the clip in Fusion and I set up the 3D camera tracker to track the footage. When I was finished tracking, I made sure that I had a solve error of less than half a pixel, and then in the export tab, I changed the 3D scene transform to unaligned. I chose a point where I wanted the origin to be, and I pressed set from selection. I did the same thing for the orientation option, I just picked a wider set of points along the ground, and pressed set from selection for the ground plane. After that is done, change the 3D scene transform back to aligned, and export the camera track. After I exported, I made sure the ground plane matched the motion by scrubbing through a bit, and it all looked pretty good to me. Also, this is very important if you're going to be trying something like this. You need to make sure you write down or record your focal length that you have in your camera track node, because you're going to be using that later. Then I brought in an FBX exporter node, and also a Transform 3D node. So grab your magic decks and your D20s, because this next bit's going to get kind of nerdy. So every program that deals with measurement has to have a defined base unit. Because if they don't, then measurements are just numbers, basically. And this is different for Blender and DaVinci Fusion, so they're not the same. So in the FBX exporter node, I set the scale to 0.1. And then in the Transform 3D node, I set the scale to 100. I'm not quite sure what the math works out to, but I got the solution by watching this YouTube video. So go ahead and check it out if you want more info. 
Anyways, in the FBX exporter node, I named my file and chose my save location. I chose FBX 20 1300 for the version, and I set my applicable frame rate. Then I headed up to the fusion menu and rendered all savers. In Blender, I went to File, Import, and FBX. After importing the FBX file, the first thing I did was enter the camera's menu and increase the view clip distance a bunch so nothing in the scene would be cut off. I also deleted that big plane in the background, that was where our footage was being held in uh, DaVinci Resolve, so we don't really need that anymore. Now remember that focal length you were supposed to write down? Sure you do, because you're all good little boys and girls. Except you, Jerry. F*** you, Jerry. Anyways, I entered that focal length. Then, under the Background Images tab, I imported the original footage of the room. With the correct focal length entered, the scene lined up. It should be noted that once you import and set the camera's focal length, it really shouldn't be touched after that, so just kind of like, just leave it alone after that point. While in the camera view, I deleted the imported ground plane and created a new one, lining it up with the scene's leading lines. I also added another plane and rotated it 90 degrees on the x-axis and lined it up with the wall in the back. This will take some micro adjustments along the x and y axes, but just stay the course. You can do it. And just to get it out of the way, I made sure my render engine was set to cycles, my render device was set to GPU, and in the object properties for both the wall and the floor planes, I checked the shadow catcher checkbox. That way their only function is to show environment shadows and nothing else. I also added a shadow catcher plane for the tabletop and the countertop as well. We don't have to touch the floor or ground plane again. Once all that was done, I started looking for assets to plant in the scene. I got these assets from Polygon, the Donut Dude's website. They were well modeled and are textured with PBR textures, so that's just one less step that my lazy ass has to take. So I got the models placed, but you might notice one glaring issue. There's no depth. All the models are basically just floating over some video image plane. So to fix this, I added in another cube, extruded it, and sized it to mimic the shape and position of the chairs and table or any other thing that should pass in front of the other models. When I was satisfied with the modeling, I gave the depth meshes a holdout texture so that the geometry would be filled with alpha. I could have just used masks in the compositing process, but doing it this way, the shadows are actually way more realistic to the scene. You can see here, everything in wireframe mode is a holdout piece of geometry and it mimics the real world furniture. So to even further help the realism, remember those pictures I took with my 360 camera? Well, I took all of those photos and I imported them into Affinity Photo and I created an HDRI. HDRI? What's that do? Get off my bed. Well, an HDRI is a spherical image that retains lighting data. So by importing this into Blender as the scene's environment, all of the meshes and models that we put into that scene will mimic the actual light direction of the video, or at least very close to it. Then it was time to render. I made sure to render the files in a format that supports transparency. Blender chooses PNG by default, but I rendered in a multi-layer open EXR format because I wanted to have the different passes for the diffuse, for the glossy, etc. However, I bungled the setup in the layer tab, so... <laughs> you f***ed that one up. Anyways, with all that done, we're gonna jump right back into DaVinci Resolve right as soon as I get done kicking Harold out of my room, the stupid c So the first thing I do when I start compositing visual effects is I use the plugin Neat Video. This cleans up the footage's film grain, because all footage has film grain, and it can uh, lead to uh, the eye detecting visual effects if there's not a uniform type of grain over the entire scene. So that's what Neat Video does, and I highly suggest you check it out, because it is literally like magic, or how it erases grain. So look into Neat Video, definitely use it if you're going to start getting into visual effects, just to help with grain processing or whatever. So navigate to the folder you saved all your Blender frames, select all of them, and import them as an image sequence. I grabbed my Blender image sequence and merged it over the pipeline. It lights up red at first, that's because I imported it as a multi-layer format and I had to select the layer data that I wanted the node to output. So in this case it was the combined pass. It was really dark because Blender exports EXRs in a linear gamma space. I threw on a quick color space transform and transformed the footage into the same color space as my camera, S Gamut 3 Cine and S Log 3. I also renamed the media so my dumbass wouldn't forget which was which. Next, I copied the EXR image sequence node, renamed it to Shadow Pass, changed the layer data to the Shadow Catcher layer, and merged it over just before the model branch. Turned everything white, which was a simple fix, I just went into the Merge node and I set the Apply mode to Multiply, and it retained the shadows. 
After that, it was a simple job of adding and animating a few masks, mostly to make some color adjustments, adding some uniform film grain over the rest of the comp, then hopping over to apply my final color grade and exporting to get this. So that's it. That's how I incorporated those 3D models into my real world footage using uh, Blender and DaVinci Fusion. I know it was a bit of a departure from my usual DaVinci tutorials, but all the compositing was done in Fusion, so I think it applies. Just get off my back. Thank you very much for watching, and thank you especially if you're one of my 200 subscribers. And uh, I always feel scummy doing this, but uh, feel free to subscribe, and you know, here's to another 200 subscribers. I think I'll close out by quoting the late great Stephen Hawking.